That is a mink right there. That's why I haven't got any muskrats. And that's why I have wild rice. Ho <laughs> ho! The dragonfly that's zipping around here, you probably can't see it. It isn't that the dragonflies like me. It's that the dragonflies like the mosquitoes that like me. <laughs> what a patient little frog. This is the tiniest frog I've ever seen. He's moving. Come on, stay there for just a little longer. He's like the size of a dime. Behold the glory of wild rice. This one here appears to be all one wild rice plant. I'm going to attempt to tie it up with stinging nettle cordage. I saw a picture of uh, old, an old picture of an Ojibwa tying up wild rice. So I'm not going to say I'm going to try to do that exactly. But I want to see what I can do. Similarly. Hopefully the sun comes back out. Because the mosquitoes are coming out now. I just got done piling up the firewood that I cut up last week when I was here. And then this is my next project to try this. Uh, a couple years ago I was experimenting with getting this cordage together from stinging nettles and I figured out a way to get nice long strings so uh, I'll show you how I do that you need gloves though and if you're really careful you can get two, two long cords out of each stinging nettle so the longer, obviously, the longer the plant you have, the longer the cord you're going to have. So I rub these. There's little nodules on there. You can see that right there. You got to rub them. If you rub them, then you weaken them. If you weaken them, then they'll allow that cordage to be stripped off of there. When I didn't, when I wasn't doing that, then the cordage would break at those nodules. Not all of them, but once in a while it would hang up, and then the cord would break, and then you wouldn't have a long cord. So I'm just rubbing and rubbing. You know, at the end, you've got kind of it being weak because it's little, and somewhere down here it gets a little stiffer, and then right there is where you want to break it. 
that broke. Now you can kind of slip it off of there, see that? Now at some point you're only going to get half of it to come. The other half will stay on there. But some, there, there there's, there's half right there. Okay, now I'm only doing half. The other half is still on there. So now see how it slips through that nodule is real easy. And I'll tell you, this is some tough cordage. I think the picture that I saw, the, the uh, native man was using bark. I might get, get three strings out of this, but I'm going to do one at a time. Tie them up one at a time. Once you rub it, then you don't have the stingers on there anymore, and you can take your gloves off. One, two, three, four. We have six of them in here. You can get, let's say you can get a pound out of one plant. And I think it's possible because of the tillers. They send up a bunch of shoots out of one plant. And if they have high fertility, I think it's possible to get, you know, a high amount of rice off of one plant. So that's what I'm looking at is trying to figure out if I can do that or to do as much as I can. I'm not saying I'm going to get a half pound or a pound, it's how much can I get. Okay, so here's the, the other one. This is going to be the cord that wraps around the rice. I think I can get another one out of that one yet. Okay, here's the cord. So I think what they did this for it was never explained to me why they did it. I'm just thinking this is what I know, this is what I know. And that is to keep the wild rice from dropping its seed in the, in the, into, the into the bottom of the lake or wherever it's growing. Because it all ripens over a three week period. So one or two falls off here, one or two falls off there, then And if you're not there, when it's ripened, you're going to lose it. So they're tying it up, I think, to preserve it all. If I kind of remember in a picture, maybe they had enough cordage to wrap the whole thing so you couldn't even see a stalk, maybe the whole whole thing was covered, I don't know. So right now I'm getting to the rice. I can probably bend it over the fence now and work up higher with it. There. I'd say this is going pretty good. Now we're to the first rice. Now I'm going to wrap it, cover the whole thing. I should take a couple stalks of this with the rice in its milk stage and uh, ferment it and eat it. Maybe it was rushes they were using to tie it up. I can't remember for sure. All right, I will double back on this and tie it. Give me another cord.
since we're doing experiments, we're just going to keep right on going. Try something different then, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't look that great. But it probably takes practice. The other way, the other thing I figured out is I tried pulling them from both ways, from the fat way to the skinny way and skinny way to the fat way. And you can't do it the fat way to the skinny way. You gotta start at the skinny end of the stalk and start pulling there. Or else it's just gonna break. Nodules are still pretty, pretty tight. I might have used a knife. I think I was using a knife to kind of scratch it off. That's what I was doing. That was like two years ago when I was experimenting with that. It's not coming off as a big strip now. Let's try the other side. That's turning out to be pretty good there. Yeah, look at that one. That's a nice strip right there. Still got some leaves on the bottom. We gotta take those off. <laughs> All right. Frogs are watching me. They're saying, Ooh, I think I've seen that. My ancestors told me about that. People would spend days tying up wild rice so that they could make have good food through the winter. Probably out in the rice fields, there's more wind, less mosquitoes. It's a good place to be. Okay, let's go backwards. 
turn it off. Hear that? It wants to bend anyway, so I'm going to go fr try to find a branch. I don't need to have one to go all the way to the bottom because I can wire it into this fence. It's kind of exciting. I'll be back. Well, my basswood doesn't have very long branches on it, so I had to compromise and I used a Balma Gilead sapling. And it bends pretty good right at the top. So let's see if we can make that work. One more cord, so this time I'm going to start at the top, get the rest of these rice covered, and when I get to the stick, then I'm going to tie it off. Let's see how that goes. Got these little nodules here. I think what I did is I used a knife and I scraped them off with a knife. Fingernails working through. Okay, let's try that now. Well, I'd want to tie another one on there, but I'm not going to. I want to see what happens. It's all look very pretty.
Got to make it all presentable for Joel if he shows up. Don't know if he'll show up, but if he does, better be ready. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Let's get a close-up on it once. That's my little walking path right there. I've stepped on a duck potato. There's that frog. He's got to get out of here because he's not going to be in good shape in here. Come on. Oh, he went the wrong way. Well, we'll work on him later. So here's our wild rice stock that we tied up. There's six wild rices in here. And I tied it up with sting and nettle cordage. And I had found some saplings of Balmagiliad, which the top, this this top part right here is, is this year's growth and it bent really easy. So I didn't have long enough to get it into the soil, into the ground, but I weaved it into the fence. And that's what we got. Six stalks. They were all, they had all lost their blossoms. So I'm figuring that since they lost their blossoms, like this one here, uh, they don't need to be pollinated anymore. So there's four of them here with seed heads on them. Here's two next door. So uh, I think we can get those two involved here, right here. So then we'll have six in this one too. One, two, three, four, five, six. One kind of sticks out above all the rest. Hmm. And I got a plan for those two that are taller. All right, let's use the crappy one first because that's at the bottom. See a pollen? Very interesting. I was thinking of coming back here and harvesting some of these shorter stalks. But the rice isn't in them yet. I want to get some rice before they get past the milk stage. And ferment them. When they pluck, pluck on one of these things, there's just nothing in, there's nothing in there, really. So I don't know if I've wrap these up too early but that's part of the experiment we'll see this uh, sting and nettle cord is hanging on really nice that will do we'll stagger it I won't do any today when I come back in a week we'll do a few more we'll have to mark them to make sure I know which ones were done what time of the year and when I th think they were this one actually these three actually I'll mark them as they've lost all their blossoms as soon as they've lost it lost their blossoms maybe the next batch I'll tie up I'll make sure that there's hard seed in it so we'll see how it works out That's it, right there, see that? Okay. 
this experiment has gone exceedingly well. But you look at these leaves, and the leaves aren't as luxurious as what's over here, where I have a little area that's exceptionally fertile. It's thick swamp muck here. Look at the leaves on these wild races. Holy cow. Look at that. That is luxurious right there. And we got three of them that's gone to seed. Lots and lots and lots of blossoms. And look at all the pollinators in here. Pollen collectors are pollinating. <laughs> well, my battery's going out. I gotta get another one. <laughs> 